These are the top five tactics that I have tested so far. And they are all different formations as well. So I've tested 20 different tactics. These are the best five and I've tested all of them twice with different or same teams. It took me ages. But these results are from the five tactics I believe were the best. In no particular order other than maybe number one, we have a free at the back formation by Vujovic. Now all the links to these tactics will be down below in the description, so make sure on your way down you smash the like and make sure you are subscribed as well. Now what I like about this tactic was the wing backs on attack always made it feel like we had wingers, but because we had three in the middle, it was always causing overloads and scoring opportunities. The three at the back also meant that the wingbacks were covered often from counter-attacks and the two defensive midfielders liked to come and support attacks too. It always making it feel like we had more players on the pitch than the opposition. And with this tactic, I use Celta Vigo who are predicted to finish in 10th place. Finishing in 5th place, just a point outside of the Champions League spots. These are all holiday simulations by the way, so if you actually play the game, game by game, you might get some better results because obviously obviously your man managing and I did actually select the players that the assistant would select each time. And remember, these aren't my tactics, I'm just relaying information that I found whilst testing, so please don't go digging me out in the comments. I'm looking at you, Steve. This tactic also did well with Spurs, finishing in third place and Harry Kane and Hyun Ming Son playing very well and scoring lots of goals. Now for those of you who might not be able to download it, I'll go through each player and everything for you, so we've got two advanced forwards there. We've got two, we got one shadow striker, two wing backs on attack, and they have the same player instructions. Ones take more risks, ones take fewer risks, in fact. Two defensive midfielders, we can see the personalized instructions here for each one is both exactly the same. And three ball playing defenders on defend, and the two on the outside have a little bit more instructions than the one on the inside with a sweeper keeper on support. It is an attacking mentality, and in possession, we have a lot of instructions selected, including much shorter passes and directness, a higher tempo with your overlapping, playing out of defense, working the ball with whip crosses. Very interesting. Fairly wide as well. We are Gagan press with a counter press and counter three selected at the back here, distributing the ball to the fullbacks and the center backs, throwing it long. So really, if there is an, uh, an attacking counter attack going on with the fullbacks, then the goalkeeper may look for that. We've got a high press there in the line of engagement and a standard defensive line, much more often trigger press, would prevent short goal kick distribution. Next up, we have a 4-4-2 formation made by Josh Daly. Now, I feel like 4-4-2s are quite good this year because they are so structurally safe. However, this very much acts like a 4-2-3-1 on attack because the wingers also felt like they were involved, which I haven't really seen in previous 4-4-2s. And the support role in one of the strikers is just the key for this tactic. The drop-offs to link play with the midfield and the attack, and the late unmarked runs are just spectacular. One of the teams I tested this with is with Rennes, and it took them to a fourth place finish, just two points off the of top three. Again, I won't dwell on each tactic too much, but I'll go through the instructions for people who can't download them. This is my favorite role in this tactic, the DLF wrong from position it will drop off into here and act like a number 10 when you watch in the match engine it looks superb we've got inverted winger on attack there we've got a winger on support on the other side box box midfielder with a deep line playmaker on defense that's kind of your anchor in front of your defense there two wing backs on automatic that means whatever your mentality is set to that's how they will act so right now it will act quite positively we've got a set defense on defend and a ball playing defender on defend as well as a goalkeeper on defend. As I mentioned, positive mentality. It is very much uh, counter-attacking. We've got a very high tempo with a slightly shorter pass and directness passing into space. We're trying to get the ball up the pitch as soon as possible for the runners. We've got to regroup here so it's not a gagging press. As soon as we lose the ball, we regroup and gain our structure. That's what I'm on about with this formation. It's very structurally safe. But when we do win the ball back, it's counter-attacking and we're distributing the ball quickly, taking on kicks, trying to counter-attack the opposition. It's a mid-block as well. I quite like the mid-block this year and a lower defensive line. Very good in my opinion. More often trigger press with getting stuck in. Next, we have a 4-3-1-2 tactic by Skins. Very similar to the three at the back style and its positives. And this could be the tactic to go for if you have more central midfielders than you know what to do with because they act so fluid on attack and the fullbacks really do bomb forward creating width and it seemed to cause a lot of problems for the opposition. I used this with FC20 twice. 
finishing third and second. So we've got four outfield players here all on attack duty. So if you are maybe a weaker size, you might want to look into changing some of these on support. But I still think it kind of works because FC20 are really a middle middle of the table team now in the Eredivisie, but they still manage to do really well. So the two advanced forwards, attacking midfielder on attack as well. It's quite a good role this year. That centre midfielder on attack I always love. You'll see this guy bombing up and down. So if you have uh, an attack-minded centre midfielder, that's definitely the way to go. Your ball winners on defend and a box-to-box -box midfielder who kind of does a combination of both. Like I say, the wingbacks on support, they do tend to bomb up and down and help. It is a positive mentality. And in position, we've got the overlapping runs there, playing out of defence, a much higher tempo, a very high tempo there uh, with a slightly shorter pass and directness, passing into space. Nothing else selected. But in transition, is a Gagan press, the counter press, and the counter is selected in case you're wondering why I say Gagan press. You can select a custom style here, but that really just, all that does is select what is selected here. So you basically make your own. If you just simply copy the instructions that I've done here, you won't have to worry about the tactical style. Distribute the ball to the center backs there through short kicks. Maybe add the, the fullbacks as well to that if you have good fullbacks. High press with a line of engagement and much higher defensive line. Change that if you have slow defenders. Please change that if you have really slow defenders. Much more trigger press and prevent short goal kick distribution. The penultimate tactic is a GYRFM classic, Swans Alona. And you might have seen this one already on Hood's channel, but I tested it and it is great. What I like about this tactic was the output it created for a striker that I've never been able to get fire in in Gerard Moreno. I felt like I could have put a goalkeeper up front and the tactic would create enough chances for him to score 20 goals a season. And of course, it's rather other popular formation so maybe a favorite for you to check out if you don't like my number one pick. With Villarreal I managed to finish in third place using this tactic in the league and runners up in the Europa Conference League. But Gerard Moreno scored 40 league goals which is absolutely mental. Now I think I've actually took a look at Gareth's uh, Swans Alona tactic every single year he's done one so again it's very similar to the ones previously we'll take a look at each instructions we've got an advanced forward inside forward on the left inverted winger on the right all on attack duty with that shadow striker in the middle there. You can see the instructions selected for each player. Box to box and DLP. Always a go-to, isn't it? To start off with, before you try anything too challenging, try this combination in the middle first to see if your tactic is working. Uh, then we got two wing backs on each side, crossing the byline. Shoot left often is on the same for each. Two ball playing defenders in the middle there with the same instructions and a sweeper keeper on support role. It is a positive mentality. Once again, we've got low crosses selected fairly wide attacking width nothing selected in the approach play but higher tempo with a slightly shorter pass and directness and being a little bit more expressive uh, in transition though is gay can press counter press and counter distributing the ball to the fullback throwing it long trying to start off those counter attacks and out of possession we've got a high press but a standard line that's what i mentioned about the last tactic if you're finding you've got two slow defenders drop it down to a standard defensive line. Much more trigger press for preventing the short goal kick distribution and getting stuck in. If you find you're getting too many, many yellow cards, maybe take this off and select it for individual players that you want to have it selected if they got good decision making and passing. But overall, Gareth has delivered again. My number one spot today, though, has to be Zaz Fire 1.0. Now, the best bit about this tactic is one, the results, which you'll see in a bit. But two, it's so attacking that it's so much fun to watch in the match engine. There is always so many players in and around the edge of the area, and there's so many options for a player to pass it off to. Now, mid-season at Braga, we lost both the best goal scorer and the best midfielder. And I didn't replace them, and yet we still won the league. And I couldn't believe it. So I ran the experiment again. Vitinha was once again stolen because he was scoring so many goals in January. But Braga won the league again on goal difference this time by a country mile as well. They scored 105 goals in 34 matches. Now I'm pretty certain this is from Zaz Blue's tactic and it's just like a, a different rendition that they used. Kind of the same 
instructions, but maybe different formations. So you might actually have some success doing exactly the same thing. We've got two advanced forwards, a shadow striker. We've seen that combination a few times today. Two wingers on support, but we've got the player instructions there. Take more risk, shoot less off, and tackle harder on both. A Roman playmaker in the DM role. This is your man. This player needs to be good because, of course, they are basically holding fort in the midfield. you got two inverted wingbacks who will slot in and help that midfield. They are on attack, though, which is why you sometimes might see seven players up front and you've got the instructions there. Two ball players on defend and a sweeper keeper on support. It's a positive mentality once again. In possession, a much higher tempo, a higher tempo there. Fairly wide, playing out of defense. Low crosses with work the ball into the box we have in transition a gagan press counter press and a counter rolling it out but nobody is instructed to collect it so it could be anybody and out of possession we got a high press and a higher defensive line again you kind of need some kind of quick defenders or you might get caught over the top quite a lot but there is a drop off defensive line option which has been selected here for your defenders to not try and play the players offside uh, if they are not quick enough and much more often trigger press will prevent short go kick distribution so that's my top five tactics remember i'm not like an rdf or a gyrfm i don't really know a lot about tactics so if i describe something that you didn't like i'm sorry but i hope you get some kind of enjoyment from looking at these tactics maybe you're looking for a tactic to use and one of the formations is perfect for you if you can smash a like and subscribe that'd be fantastic let me know which one was your favorite tactic and why not check out this video where I made Lionel Messi change clubs every season.